Hey, hey, hey everyone. How are you today on this Wednesday? Today I wanted to talk to you about Hashimoto's and hormone balance. I have Hashimoto's. Hashim For those of you who don't know what Hashimoto's is, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And what that means is that your body attacks its own thyroid tissue and it causes you to have either low thyroid and different other symptoms like um, you can have gut issues, you have low energy, joint aches, pains, lots of other things. So with that, last Thursday, I posted some really great news and um, I have had Hashimoto's and low thyroid for, since I was, to my knowledge, since I was 32, I'm 44, so for 12 years. And 10 of those years, it went undiagnosed, or misdiagnosed, I should say, because I knew that something was wrong. I have a family history of, of thyroid, of low thyroid, high thyroid. So every year I would get my thyroid checked and I knew personally there was something wrong with me um, because it started when I had an extreme sensitivity to cold and I would get these crazy, my toe, I would lose all the circulation in my fingers and my toes and it was like Renault's symptoms and, um, and I'll, that will have to be another live or I'll write about that some other time. But I knew that that was like the kickoff of something was wrong along with panic attacks. And so I knew that something was wrong and I kept going to doctors to try and get diagnosed properly and I never was. And I was finally diagnosed properly uh, to very, very early, like very beginning of 2018. And then from there, I learned that I had Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease, which I said earlier, and I had low thyroid. So for two years, literally two years, I have worked with my physician to regulate my thyroid and to bring my aunt, my Hashimoto's antibodies down. It has been a struggle. It was so hard. It was to the point that I pretty much, like up until my, my doctor's appointment last Thursday, I had given up. I really, all my other hormones are balanced and I was working on my cortisol but I had pretty much just given up on my thyroid. I was like, I'm just gonna go to this doctor's appointment on Thursday and it's gonna be like the same old shitty news. But I went last Thursday and I found out that my thyroid is regulated, my T3 is amazing. My T3 was like beautiful numbers and my numbers were pretty much where my physician, and my, my, my numbers were pretty much where my physician wanted them and uh and my hashimoto's antibodies were down so previously when they were tested they were 85 or sorry 89 and my physician likes to see them if you have hashimoto's at 80 or below so i had them at 89 and then when i went to get my lab results last thursday they were at 65 so it means my hashimoto's is under control so since i posted that i've had some questions about um, first it was, you know, what were the primary things that helped me to regulate my thyroid and Hashimoto's? That was one question. And then I had another question about, do I think a high protein diet is a solution to, uh, to Hashimoto's? And the three things that helped me the most were number one, my diet. So getting a food sensitivity intolerance test or food allergy test, but it's really more of a food sensitivity or intolerance test because you're not having these full blown allergic reactions that you need like an EpiPen for or anything like that. It's more of um, you have this food sensitivity when you eat it. Uh, and I'll, I'm gonna get back to that in a second because that's super, super important as it relates to all autoimmune diseases, not just Hashimoto's, but all autoimmune diseases. And I'm gonna get to that in a second. So that was number one, that was super important for me to do is to discover what my body was intolerant to and avoid those foods because that causes flare ups. And then number two, um, it was to find the right thyroid medication, which was really, really challenging. So I'll get to that in a second too. And then the third thing was to regulate my cortisol. So I'll address that last. So the first thing, let's talk about the food sensitivity test because this is so important and I think People don't understand the importance of this. And this is not just about people being neurotic, like, I can't eat this, I can't eat that, hell no. <laughs> this is about you need to go and you need to have a, a reliable food. If you have an autoimmune disease, whether it's Hashimoto's or any other autoimmune disease, but since I'm talking about Hashimoto's, let's say if you have Hashimoto's, go get a reliable food sensitivity test done. 
and I've had two done. One was a pinprick test. Um, I did pinner test, which showed a few things. It showed arugula, it showed um, cabbage, it showed cacao, it showed yeast. Uh, the biggest offenders on that list for me are arugula and cabbage. And under the cabbage family, like Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, like broccoli is fine for me, but like, mm, can't like cannot do that stuff right my stomach is just like hell no and it just like bursts into flames when i do that both cabbage and um and arugula mm, it's like fire in my belly um so that came up on the pinner test and they're like that's a super easy one but there's only a few things that came up um and then i then in 2018 after i was diagnosed with hashimoto's I did a skin scratch test, which is I lie on my back and they like scratch your back with these things. You have to lie there for like 20 to 30 minutes as your body has a reaction. So on that list, all these things came up. Black pepper, white potato, pecan, Brazil nut, hazelnut, walnut, rice, rye, crab, cucumber, grape. So like I don't drink wine. I don't eat raisins, grapes, like none of that shit. Um, cauliflower, pork, egg yolk, turkey, perch for fish, cacao came up again, tomato and whole eggs. So out of these things, the biggest offenders, and I knew already based upon what I've been eating, because I'm really in tune with how my body reacts to food. I knew that the pork, the turkey, the rice, the pepper, and the grape, like the, and cauliflower, like those things I knew, I was like, there's something off when I eat this stuff, right? Um, and then, so I went and I eliminated all these things initially, and I slowly started to re, I have it, there are things that I didn't reintroduce because I knew that they didn't agree with me, so I've just never gone back to them. Like the grape, I've never gone back to. I've never, I haven't had sushi in like two years <laughs> or longer. I haven't had sushi in longer than two years. I used to love to eat sushi all the time, but because of rice, like I just stay away from it. Um, and like the turkey, like stay away from that. Some things I have that I eat that I'm okay with, like the tomato are okay, whole eggs are okay. I can have uh, chocolate in moderate amounts. I have to be really careful about that, but I can have it in moderate amounts. I do stay away from cucumber. So, and the re so the reason why this is important is once your body develops antibodies towards a food that you are sensitive to and tolerant to, it's very easy for your body to create antibodies towards your tissue. So if you have an autoimmune disease and you're like fl having these flare-ups because you're eating all these foods that you are insensitive to and your body is creating these antibodies against these foods, the next thing it's going to do like this is create antibodies to your tissue. So if you have Hashimoto's, it's going to make it easier for your body to attack your thyroid tissue. So that's what happens with Hashimoto's. If you're not familiar with it, since it's an autoimmune disease, your body attacks its own thyroid tissue. And thyroid, your thyroid is so, it's such an important hormone. It's so important when it comes to metabolism. It's important to so many things. So, and this is true for all autoimmune diseases. So it, that's why number one, if you have Hashimoto's, some other autoimmune disease, you need to go get a food sensitivity test so that you are managing your diet so that you're not constantly having these flare ups and, and your body isn't create constantly creating these antibodies to food and therefore making it easier for your body to create antibodies to its own tissue. So it doesn't attack its own tissue. Okay. So number one, so that was huge for me. Number two was um, medication. So it was a struggle to find the right medication. I am on Armour Thyroid, which is desiccated pig thyroid. It's expensive. I spend a hundred, over a hundred, a little over a hundred dollars a month on my medication. But you know what? It's worth it because I am healthy. So all the money that I spend on this care is preventative, and it helps me to live a longer, healthier life. And typically, it's it, it has been written and you'll find this written in a lot of places that typically people who have Hashimoto's respond much better to um, much better to desiccated pig thyroid, which is either um, armor thyroid or NP thyroid. Those tend to be the better medications for people who have Hashimoto's. And that's something I help my clients with. You know, obviously I'm not a physician, I can't prescribe medication, but, I'll, but when they come to work with me, I they take a questionnaire that helps to assess their hormone imbalances, and then I guide them in the right, if they don't have a functional medicine specialist that they're working with, I guide them to work with a functional medicine specialist, and I, get, I help to provide them with the knowledge to take to that functional medicine specialist so they can make the best educated decision about their health. And 
for example, one of some of that information is knowing the best medications for, for them, if, they, if especially if they have Hashimoto's and knowing all the medications that are available to them, but knowing the, the best medications that could work with, with them if they have Hashimoto's. And I went through seven different medications to find that out. And I went through three different iterations of Armour Thyroid. I was on 30 milligrams twice a day at one point. I was on 60 milligrams twice a day at one point. And that's when like my T3 like went through the roof and I was like, and I was seeing like 111 pounds on the scale. That's when I knew like, it's normal for me to be like 112, 114 pounds. Like I've dropped down to that, like and hung out in that area for a long time. But it is like, but when I started to see 111 pounds on the scale, like I knew something was wrong and that's because my T3 was too high. And then now finally um, I am on Armour Thyroid two times a day, 45 milligrams two times a day. So we found the, the magic there. And I even went and did like compound pharmacy, desiccated pig thyroid and I did compound pharmacy plant-based which totally did not work for me at all so I have tried it all ask me I've tried it all okay so the third thing and this was the key this was like the skies opened up and the angels started singing and the sun came it was just wonderful so the third thing that I did was I regulated my cortisol because I was struggling everything my diet was in check everything else was in check right and, but still my thyroid numbers my, were coming up low and they were still not regulated and I was on the right medication and my antibodies were high. I was like, what the hell is going on? And so then I asked, I had learned that if your cortisol is not regulated, if you have low cortisol, it can also pull your thyroid down and it can cause your thyroid medication to not work. So I brought this to my functional medicine specialist, to my physician, I talked to her about it, and I said, hey, listen, can we test my cortisol? Because this, this might be the missing link to what's happening with my thyroid. She's like, yeah, let's do it. So I went, took a Dutch test, tested my cortisol. Sure enough, I was diagnosed with stage two adrenal dysfunction. I had adrenal fatigue. I had a flat line cortisol, like day and night. I had like, there was like really no peak. There was the only time it was normal was like eight or nine a.m. I was having like a little bit of a normal boop. But what should happen is you should wake up, cortisol should peak, it should come down, and then be nice and low so you can sleep at night. And then I was even having like even though it was low, I was having some little bumps at night. So I had got on an adrenal plan, an adrenal support plan, because the only way that you can regulate your cortisol is by uh, supplementation and also by lifestyle. That's it. So you have to be diligent about regulating your circadian rhythm. You have to be diligent about wearing blue light glasses, which is related to regulating your circadian rhythm, taking the supplements at the right time and blah, blah, blah. So I did that. And let's say that took me, I want to say, and then I had a, for about like, I did that for about two months and then I had my blood work done again. And so it took me about two months, which is not a long period of time. And often it can take people longer because they're not always compliant. But if you're, if you're compliant like me, then, then it'll happen, right? So when I went to get my lab results last Thursday, that's what did it. I had regulated my cortisol and all of my numbers, bing, 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 they all came in beautiful and regulated. So my antibodies were down and my, my cortisol and my thyroid was, was normal. So those are the three things that helped me the most. And this is stuff that I help my clients with all the time every day they come to me and i have them fill out a hormone questionnaire i give them the knowledge and the guidance that they need so they can regulate their their hormones and it, if you go to a physician right they are they will say okay these are all the things that you have to do but then you're like you have all the stuff that you have to do and you're like how the hell do i do that right like it's overwhelming so that's where i come in as a coach because your physician is not going to coach you through this. They're just going to be like, boop, here you go. Go do this now. Get everything regulated. That's where I come in. As a coach, I help you to do that. I help you to take all that information from your physician, break it down so it's not so overwhelming, and apply it bit by bit so that you can get healthy. So if you are in a position where you have been struggling to regulate your hormones, I get you. I have been there. 
Oh my God, up until last Thursday, I tell, I tell you, I, ha I had given up on my thyroid. I have been there from cortisol to testosterone to estrogen to especially my thyroid, okay? And once you have uh, Hashimoto's, like I'm always gonna have it. I'm always gonna have antibodies. This is something I'm always gonna have to work every single day to make sure that I prevent flare-ups and I keep it regular. So if you are, have been struggling with your hormone balance and you need help, I can help you. I can help you to get the information that you need so that you have the knowledge so that, and I can even help you to find a physician who can help you. And so then when you go to that physician, you have the knowledge, your arm, knowledge is power. And then after they give you your treatment plan, they're not going to guide you through that treatment plan. They're only going to talk to you every single time you go back and see them, whether it's every six weeks or every two months or whatever the hell it is. I can guide you as a coach. So if you're interested in working with me to help you to regulate your hormones and, and help you with your nutrition, I'm your girl. So link is in my bio to apply. And here's the other thing, that's a bonus. My husband and I, we work together as a team. So even though you're signing up to work with me, if for example, it comes up, you have some gut issues. Maybe you think maybe you have SIBO small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, something like that, or, and, FOD, and maybe FODMAT issues related to that, right? My, that's my husband's specialty. His specialty is gut issues and FODMAT. So if that comes up, and we just did this yesterday, I had a client who I was working with, who I'm working with, and she, has, she had some FODMAP reactions. So for the first half of the call, she and I got on and I was talking to her about her strength training and just kind of getting an update on nutrition and hormone balance. And then my husband got on for the second half of the call and he worked with her through FODMAP. And so if I need to bring him in as my team member to help you, I will. So you have both of our expertise helping you. So if you wanna work with me, or me and my husband as a team, link is in my bio to apply. We would love to help you. Have an awesome Wednesday, and I hope that all the information about Hashimoto's and Hormone Balanced helped, because I think some of it can be a game changer. All right, have a great day. I'll be back on here real soon. Bye.